Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I already have a video up on how to study anatomy in medical school but this one is particularly about how I studied anatomy in medical school and how I took notes. So this is a little bit more personal in which I'll show you my notes because the last one was all about resources and everything but this is about how I took notes and how I, I studied anatomy in medical school. I'm sorry if the camera is a little shaky. I still don't have a proper setup but I will. I will get one. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Anyway, so the first thing that I showed you guys in the previous video was of course my textbook and this time I have also have my textbook in front of me and I'll show you why is it so important to carry your textbook in your lectures. So first of all, I, um, I did not carry my entire textbook. I just, you know, took out pages and binding them, the particular uh, pages that we are going to do um, in the class at that day or in that particular module, right? Now, this is coming from an A-plus student. I have always uh, scored great in anatomy. It is one of my favorite and my, one of my best subjects in medical school. So doing that, actually taking your textbook to your classes actually helped you, uh, you know, figure out what stuff is, what stuff is important and what is not, uh, you know, by seeing if your professor is teaching that particular topic and, and how much depth he's teaching that particular topic. Sometimes your professor will teach a certain topic more than what is described in your textbook, sometimes less than what is described in your textbook. So carrying your textbook just gives you that, uh, just gives you, you know, that insight on how much he's teaching, right? The other thing is that my textbook is heavily highlighted. I literally highlight everything now is it efficient to highlight everything no and that is why i use two colors the the colors that uh, the stuff that is in orange is super important right and this is something that i will revise at the end time and the stuff that is in blue that means it's not that important like i already know it but i really wanted to highlight it in the first read the stuff that is in pink is clinical notes so that that's how i color code my highlighting so it becomes a little more easier right Another thing that I do is that I take notes on my books. So if a certain, I'm sorry, the camera is out of focus. Just a second. So yeah. So if a certain thing is uh, is is bugging me, I'll just write it down in my book. So then when I'm revising it a day before exam, I I make sure to revise them first because uh, this is where I highly I'm more likely to make make mistakes because I'm not clear about these uh, particular stuff, right? The third thing is that my school at least tests us heavily on the clinical notes like they will give us some scenarios about uh, a patient a 45 year old patient comes to you with this and this complaint find out the anatomical reason of the problem right so that's and that's actually how most of the schools will test you on this particular section of anatomy so you have to make sure that the clinical notes are clear to you and to make them more clear I use a trick that I will show you in just a moment when I'll go through my notes right uh, if your school you know gives you body to dissect then it's not important for you to have a good hold of the figures because you are, you've already seen the bodies but if your school like mine uh, my school doesn't give us body to dissect we have seniors who dissect the bodies for us kind of and we have already dissected parts so we don't have a complete body this is what I'm trying to say so for us uh, figures are very important because they helps uh, because they really help us you know get hammer down the information in our head so Textbook, very essential. And at the same time, you know, it's very, very essential. Now, what I used to do for the topics that I did not get from textbook, how I used to study them is what I will show you here in this huge file in which I have my notes that I've made throughout my year, you know, in an anatomy. So it's not a lot of, I think, stuff. I think it's okay. I mean, that's something that you must do. Anyway, so let's, let's, without further ado, let's just get into it. I'm sorry for this one little thingy here. Right. So first, let's start with the clinical notes. So what I used to do with the clinical notes is that I used to convert those particular notes into questions. So if you can see that in my book, they have just written down the information in a paragraph, right? So if I open up a clinical note here, for example, this one, taking the carotid pulse, like where you take the carotid pulse pulse right or a better would be uh, a better would be yes like per, uh, piriform fossa and the foreign body so it's, it's an area where your foreign bodies get stuck if you know you can choke uh, in that particular area if some foreign body gets stuck there so they have literally written them down in paragraphs right now I convert these clinical notes um, into questions so as you can see which nerves are affected by demyelinating diseases of the CNS such as multiple sclerosis so optic nerve that is because it is dry from the uh, from the uh, nervous system right so as you can see what I have done is that instead of writing that optic nerve uh, 
is affected by demyelinating diseases of the CNS. I've converted this particular thing into a question. What it what it does, it, it, it gives me a little more insight about how a particular thing would be asked. And it makes the information so much easier to digest. So I have literally pages of pages of clinical notes, uh, you know, converted into such setting. And that really helps me hammer down the information. So that is super important. I highly recommend it because it has really, really helped me a lot, right? Right. So as you can see, and I've done this for all three subjects, for histo, for embryo, and for uh, gross anatomy and head and neck, everything. So like this, when do internal brain kill fistulas occur? So I've written how, why and where and, you know, why do they occur, where do they occur, and all these particular things that they can ask you because they'll give you a particular scenario and they'll, they'll ask you these particular questions that where did the problem happen where is the most likely cause or what is the most likely diagnosis and, and stuff like that right so you just have to really hammer down all these clinical notes in your head uh, now listen how is the nerve to the pterygoid canal formed? I have also made questions of the things that I couldn't remember. So these were all the clinical scenarios, but this is particularly, and this is not a clinical scenario, but I couldn't remember the, the nerves that make up the nerve of the, ter nerve of the pterygoid canal. So I converted this into a question instead of just reading it over and over again. And that really helped me remember it. And that really helped me, you know, get done, you know, just get it fixed in my head so i literally have as i told you guys pages and pages of information that i've converted into questions and this this is so helpful because uh, you have converted what could be asked in 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 this in this you know written style into a more questionnaire style and that would give you and then when the question pops up in an exam you will be very easily be able to answer that right now for the topics that I never understood well. I used to draw them. See, anatomy is all about sketching your heart and soul out, right? So uh, for all the things that I really didn't understand well, I have sketches. I have literally sketches and sketches of things that I really wanted to dream down. So I 